that this is a very, very accurate summation of who he is as a person and what he's talking about. Yeah, you have to work for what you have. Nobody's going to give you anything. You have to work. Um, my dad is a super skilled tradesman and was the director of engineering at a chain of hotels while I was growing up. And um, he, uh, yeah, just an amazing, amazing person. And he took a job as a, a lead carpenter in Antarctica when I was about six years old to help build biodomes for scientists, which is super gnarly, uh, <laughs> to say the least. It's in Antarctica, it's a, a negative 60 degree desert. And at the end of the day, you know, uh, it's super dangerous, and he did that not because he wanted to be there. No one wants to be in Antarctica doing manual labor. He did it because he felt he needed to to provide for his family, and that was how he brought home a paycheck. And that paycheck, you know, people went there like my dad that didn't come home. So I saw from like a really really young age that you just have to work for what you have, and he did everything that he could for us. And it was really inspiring, and he's just the type of person where everything that he does, washing a car, uh, building something, fixing something around the house, the third one you can ask my mom about, but he just, uh, <laughs> so much genuine pride of taking the time to do things the right way. And I don't know if he just turned this on while I was around, but I picked up on it, and it is a huge, 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 huge part for him. So, that's my dad. So that's, that's kind of it. And, uh, and when I was about 11 years old, I discovered the coolest thing in the world, and that was punk rock. And uh, this is one of my personal heroes, Jello Biafra of the Dead Kennedys. If you're not familiar, you should listen to them after we get out of here. We can do it together. Um, and through punk rock, I got into skateboarding as well. And it was really cool because it was the first time in my life that I actually felt something real. And uh, I don't want to romanticize it, but I could just feel like my heart beating out of my chest just with these two things. Uh, I was energetic, it was passionate, it was aggressive, it was loud, it was everything that was, it was dangerous, creative, everything that was awesome. And I just wanted to be a part of that. And um, the cool part about that was there was this overarching unity uh, kind of between the crossover of these two scenes. And it was the first time that I'd actually been able to make a human connection like with other weirdo little kids that liked the same things that I did, because I never had that. So a shared passion uh, with somebody is probably one of the greatest feelings in the world to me. So it was something that I wanted to hold on to uh, for a long time. So uh, a big overarching idea between punk and skateboarding, which is how I grew up, is uh, it's DIY. And everybody knows if uh, you want to get something done, you can do it yourself. Uh, the only person holding, your, holding back is yourself. You know, you can make anything you want. And to have this sort of liberating, um, you know, kind of idea when you're super young that you can do anything is amazing to feel that. So, you know, when we were little kids, we'd dumpster dives, go to construction sites, get materials to build a little spot. Uh, someone had an idea for a shirt, we cut stencils and spray paint them. And it was, it was so awesome to know that we didn't have to rely on anybody for anything and that we could just do whatever we wanted. Oops, sorry. Um, so the unfortunate thing is a lot of things that we're passionate about in our youth, uh, we kind of lose when we're adults. And this is something that I kind of I kind of base my life on, and it's really important to me. And uh, hopefully it comes through sort of in my career and, and other things that I do. So that being said, uh, I came up with this uh, idiot-proof process for great success. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> We work in an industry where process is just such a huge part. And it's awesome to have a good process, but it gets romanticized so much. And I think almost it ends up being that people talk about the process more than the end product. And um, everybody has their own one. No, no one's better than another. You, know, you just have to find what works for you. So uh, I wanted to share kind of my process with you guys. And I don't mean to be preachy. Take this for whatever it is. If you like something, sweet. If you hate it, that's fine too. Uh, so this is super easy, and this ranges in three steps from very easy to extremely hard. The first step is to feel something strongly. And that's like the easiest thing to do in the world, to feel something strongly. It feels good to, to love something. It feels probably better to hate something. Um, but we're all humans, and that's just, you have these guttural reactions. And uh, you should have an opinion, because opinions are cool and they kind of inform what you do. And uh, no one wants to be a pedestrian, so have an opinion. Um, 
The second part, and this uh, takes more motivation, but it's still super easy, uh, just do something about it. And it can be literally anything, however you want to express yourself. Uh, if you're a, a painter or a writer or a poet or an illustrator or a mime or a circus clown, it doesn't matter. However you want to express yourself, just do something about how you feel. And the third part, and this is the trickiest part, and it doesn't happen as frequently as I think it should, uh, but you need to show what you did to somebody. Just show what you made to somebody else. And it doesn't matter if it's one person or a hundred people, just show it. Um, because in a selfish way, we've satisfied ourselves creatively. And, you know, we have it and we're looking at it. But if no one else sees it, then what's the point? Because your voice isn't being heard. So show it to somebody. It's pretty easy. So I wanted to talk about a story that's a little bit difficult to talk about. I'll do my best to be eloquent. Um, that kind of involves this process. So uh, April 15th, 2013, was the Boston Marathon bombing. And um, it was a tragic, sad day that I don't need to go into detail about. It was, uh, it was disgusting, vile, and, and, and scary. I mean, we're all local, and uh, when something like this happens in your backyard, it's terrible. And you feel helpless, and you don't really know what to do. Um, but the really beautiful thing that sort of came from this was this overarching unity of, of people that came together. And I mean this in a literal sense, from the first responders to people who ran straight to uh, Charles MGH to donate blood to all the charities and fundraisers, and it was just amazing to see that happen in wake of such a, a terrible, terrible day. So um, this is probably one of the more well-known things I'm sure you guys have all seen that kind of came up from it, and uh, I really liked it. It was, uh, it was transparent, and it was defiant, and uh, it was easy to read. People understood what it was very easily, whether you were from Boston or outside of town. So I saw all these things popping up, and um, you know, I got really inspired, and I was feeling things strongly, was the first part. I was feeling things very strongly. Uh, and I don't mean that as a pun, that, that was terrible. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm so, so fucking sorry. <laughs> I, I was feeling things. I needed to do something about it. And one thing that's always really intrigued me about design is taking an existing image that people have an association with and uh, altering it in a way to, to give it uh, a new meaning. I, I've always really been drawn to that. So I wanted to make something that, um, that used this Boston V, the Red Sox logo, as a jump off point. So I was looking at it and thinking, well, you know, what can I do to this that hasn't already been said? What do I want to say? Well, I wanted to say that you know, there's been destruction and tragedy and loss. Uh, well, excuse me. Uh, so, uh, in a very literal sense, uh, the first thing I did was I started to strip away the top of the V, um, just to take a part piece of, take a piece of it away uh, to make it more vulnerable. I ended up with this wonky thing, and uh, you know, it looks terrible. It's sad. It's just very vulnerable. It's less than what it is. Um, and I, I wanted to inject a, a kind of lot of positivity into it, and I didn't know how at all. So I just stared at it for a long time and hated myself uh, and things. So I was finally able to kind of look at it and realize that uh, the inside of the beat, the counter space for you typographic nerds, uh, all it needed to do was connect the diagonals on the bottom to, to make a heart. So with a little liberty, I was able to, uh, to make this. And um, this was a sketch that I had made, and it's really the idea of the basic structure of the Red Sox logo, strip the part to be less than with the heart in the middle. It obviously doesn't hit when it's black and white, but you know, adding in the traditional colors, this is sort of what we ended up coming up with. And um, you know, I was pretty, pretty satisfied with, with what I had made. And um, so, so I had done the first two steps now. I had done something about how I felt. And I had to show somebody. So I was uh, sharing studio space with some friends, and I showed it to the creative director, uh, a good friend of mine, Kevin Lee. And he's like, "Well, you're gonna make T-shirts out of this, right?" And I was like, "Um, I, yeah, the photos." <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like, how am I gonna do that, you know? And he was just like, "Hey, listen, man, like, we're gonna write a check to the one fund, anyways. If we sign this over to you, uh, I bet you can double it at least." And I was just like, "Holy shit! Like, that's so nice! Like, damn." I'm gonna do that for sure. And uh, I'm like, but how are we gonna sell these, you know? And he's like, don't even worry about it. 
like we're already building a website uh, to get it done. And uh, it was amazing to see him kind of just be like, oh, yeah, we're doing it. He, uh, all of his team helped out. Justin's one of the people that worked there. He helped out with the site. Um, so it was, just, it was just incredible to kind of get that reaction coming immediately. Like, Here's this money, double it, let's do your thing. And I was just like, hell yeah, man, let's just tell you, let's do it. And uh, so the next part was to come up with a name for this, and because we needed to promote it and, and everything. So we kind of sat down together and came up with this idea. And uh, you know, worked on a couple different levels. We were trying to bring back a piece of something that was missing from the heart. And uh, so yeah, the deed had been done, and uh, now we just needed to show other people this. And um, I needed to get the t-shirts printed. And that was a big deal, because we needed to do it quickly. And I didn't want to use some bullshit overnight, sorry, uh, <laughs> digital printer. Um, you know, just because it's not, it just didn't feel human, it didn't feel right, it was just, I, I wanted to get it done the right way. So I called my friends that run a screen printing shop in Virginia, um, just the epitome of, of craftsmen, and I told them about the idea, and they just dropped everything they were doing, and were like, yep, let's do it. All their client work, and I was just so blown away, I was so humbled. I'm like, oh my god. Uh, I was so, so blown away with their support and, you know, they're like, yeah, let's do this. And uh, I wanted to show you some process shots and these guys do things the right way, for sure. They pull all the shirts one at a time. So here's a picture of one of the screens, I'm sure you're all familiar with to some, to some extent of the screen printing process. Um, the first color getting laid down, second color, and then this was the end result that we came up with. And uh, so then we had a, a ton of shirts, several several hundred shirts uh, sent to us, and uh, it was awesome. And then um, and then I was talking to Kevin and, and Justin, and I was just like, all right, guys, let's get this site going. <laughs> and uh, like, yeah, yeah, we're developing it, but we need like a custom PayPal nerd cart or something. <laughs> something, that I, don't, something that I don't know what it is. It's totally beyond me. And, and I was like, yeah, we'll just get that card and get it up. <laughs> and, and they're like, no, no, we need like a developer to do this, like to build this thing. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, of course, no problem. I'll just find a developer for you. And uh, I had one of these moments. <laughs> um, I didn't even know what I was asking for. So I just started spamming the shit out of Facebook and Twitter, uh, just writing requests, emailing people, just calling random strangers uh, asking if they could do this thing. I got an amazing response. Probably, I probably talked to about 40 people in a day, and it was incredible. And, but no one could do it. No one could do it. So this is still happening at this point. We had done all this work, and we couldn't get this site going, and it sucked. Um, I got a call, or I got an email from a friend of mine from high school that I hadn't spoken with in maybe like six or seven years. And uh, he was a grad student at MIT, who was not even a developer, but reached out and said it asked if he could help. And I was like, hey man, do you know anything about this? He's like, oh yeah, totally. I'll just do it in like, like an hour. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit, that's awesome. And uh, he built out this the back end, he did the card and everything. And you know, like, I was like, all right, dude, like, what's, your, what's your rate? He's like, no, no, don't even worry about it. Like, don't even pay me. And I was like, even better. This is <laughs> That's like the worst thing to say. Free work from a creative. Like, oh my god. So, so anyways, that happened, and uh, I still had this sinking feeling that it wasn't good enough. Uh, we got all these shirts in, and it was just this overwhelming support from the community. It was like four or five hundred shirts, something like that. And uh, it was just so humbling to see them all like stacked in line to see like this incredible like from the community. Just I don't know. I can't even speak to it. I mean, yeah, I'll start going, but um, <clears throat> it's, uh, to me it wasn't good enough, and I just needed to do something extra to make it special, just to show these people that we really cared about them. So in a really simple sense, um, you know, we just got these stickers made, and it was really easy to do. So we just got a ton of stickers made, uh, you know, stuffed them in the envelopes, uh, went out throwing them around the city, um, you know, and, and I was feeling a little bit better, uh, but then I was looking at all these blank envelopes that we had, and I was like, God ah, damn, these are so boring and dumb. These white envelopes, like, these people don't deserve that. So I got a rubber stamp made and just started stamping everything out uh, one at a time uh, because I felt that they deserved it just to their support. It, mean, it meant so much to us, you know. 
So, uh, you know, we ended up sitting down, five, six, seven of us, something like that, and just stuffing envelopes, and we had to keep a manual tally on the inventory, and it was, uh, it was ridiculous. Something got messed up, so we had like an Excel sheet, and we were just like, okay, John Smith, 344 whatever street, okay, done. So it was just one, 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 one. It was terrible. It was terrible. <laughs> but, um, you know, we raised some money for charity, which was cool, but I mean, really no amount of money or anything you can do is going to change anything, you know, and it's unfortunate, but uh, it was in some small way what we were able to contribute uh, at that time because together we had all, you know, felt something strongly and together we collectively made something and then we showed it to people and in doing so, the support and the awareness and everything that we raised, that was just kind of how we were able to, to show how we felt about a situation. So, in conclusion, and I don't mean this in a, in a negative way at all, <laughs> I really don't, I really don't because I would never leave you guys in a negative spot because you're all really nice. Uh, but the world is an ugly garbage can. It really is. I, I literally and metaphorically, I do find it to be garbage. But there is this amazing beauty that's buried underneath everything. And uh, I think it's up to all of us to kind of dig through all the bullshit to find that beauty and to share it with other people. Because the world doesn't have to be ugly. And I think it's up to us to, uh, to make it better. So that'll do it. Uh, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for letting me share my story with you.
job when no one would hire me, and now we all share studio space together with my friend Mark too, who used to work there. So, uh, personal projects. I can't say enough about self-initiated projects. That's uh, that's what worked for for me and my my uh, uh, whatever it is I do career. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and then people saw it on the internet. Oh yeah. Uh, 